Hi everyone, this is E the Empty Nester again. Today I'm going to share a little bit about the um, potato, chew potato seeds and the um, oka and maca and, that I'm growing from seeds also. All of them are Adrian or Andrian, you know, from the Andes in South America. Crops, their roots are tubers and um, maca is kind of a bulb. Um, kind of like a rutabaga, a turnip, a radish, and um, the difference in it is it's got some medicinal properties, kind of like ginseng does. Um, I'm not going to go into all the details. There, I've seen it powdered and you know sold for a hormone balancer and this, that, and the other thing, and. Um, it's grown at the high, some of the highest elevations um, in the Andes, and it's um, something I decided to try to grow, and I'm taking you along on the journey. Also, you saw me last year with the Oka, and you know, saw it's kind of hard to grow in my climate. It doesn't like um, high temperatures, and it doesn't set tubers until fall because it's daylight sensitive. It's 12 hours or less when it starts forming its tubers, and I grew it by a t from a tuber last year. This year I'm going to grow a tuber and seeds, and then um, I'm not going to include Yakon today. I've got several varieties to add to my collection that you'll see it another time. But um, I'll show you. I planted some of the true potato seeds on the. I planted one on the 11th and then the rest of the tray on the 14th and that was um, two and four days after the new moon. The second tray I planted two days after the full moon and um, I am trying to compare the difference to see if anything better. You know, the new moon is best for seed starting, but the after the full moon is best for two for root crops, and these are root crops. And on the um, first planting, excuse me a second, I need my glasses. Um, I'm keeping notes in this little book of what I planted where and whatever, you know, how long it took. It was like six days for the first sprout, and then on the second planting, it was um, eight days for the maca and ten days for the oka, to, you know, one of each to sprout. But um, they both are sprouting about the same time. A lot of the differences, too, in the variety of tuber that they're going to produce. True potato seeds are from a berry. You know, most of our commercial potatoes have flowers and um, not many of them, because they're male sterile, they can't produce berries, but um, Yukon Gold is one that can produce a berry. And in the United Kingdom, they have a lot, like Desiree and Charlotte and Sapomero and I forgot how many plants that they have that can still produce berries and you you know I've got videos if you take a look through my archives of videos of how to process the berries and regrow them from seed like I'm doing now and the benefit to that is um, you can cross pollinate and create new versions of potatoes and with these potatoes, um, like last year you saw when I harvested them, a lot of them are small little potatoes and you just take those potatoes and grow them again this year. So you're kind of growing seed potatoes from the seed. But some of them are, um, can produce a big one and you can still eat them, you know, kind of like little fingerling sized potatoes. But um, You never know, you know, what you're going to get. Everything is, um, you could get one potato plant with several different color potatoes. Everything is, you know, something exciting, something new. But they come from the same line of potatoes, you know, depending on, 
if you keep it across, bred with the type of same type of potatoes, you know, like a yellow versus a yellow, a red versus a red, you know, or you can mix them and get a yellow potato with red inside. You know, it's all just fun, and I'm really enjoying the process. And um, since I don't have any actual plants or um, pictures of my own yet, I used Art Rage and painted some so you could get an idea of what maca looks like. Here's a look at the picture I drew of all the um, crops. An ulna is kind of like an oka in shape, and there's many different varieties of both. The um, maca is the tuber, not tuber, it's like a radish, and it's pretty much a root crop with a bulb and greenery. You can eat the tops of it, but um, it, it doesn't really have a lot of tops that you want to make a steady diet of it. The one I'm growing is the yellow one here where there's two other types. more One more of a red purpley one and a dark black gray one. And then Oka is many and many colors and shapes. It goes from teeny tiny to small potato size. This is kind of what the top of the maca looks like with the greenery cut off and then the yukon. You've seen, you know, a past video about the yukon, and I'll show you another video in the future of planting them again. The true potato seeds, I just show, I'll show you in a second. But you can get many colors, many shapes, many sizes. But I did uh, a little bit of a drawing to make it animated to show you. Just a little, <laughs> but on with the show. And um, let me show you what the plants look like today. I'll bring you over here to the window. I added a um, rack over here in front of the window to go with the grow area. And um, this is the first rack that I started on the 11th and the 14th. Let's see, number wise. Yeah, this is number three. Number one. Okay, that's the first bag that I started. And you can see that it's got the um, cotyledon leaves and two more rows of leaves started. Some of the true leaves. And doing really well. And then this is the second batch that I started, and a number of them haven't sprouted yet, but a number of them have. And this was um, the 23rd, I think. I wrote the, it's the 24th when I started these. So they're, these little guys right here aren't very old. Let me show you a newly sprouted one. Right there, and then on the maca and the oka from seed. Right there is a baby oka growing from seed, and a baby maca plant. It still has the shell on it from the seed. And I do all of these the same. I just sprinkle the seeds on top of the soil, and it's not soil. This is cocoa core. It's a sterile soil. That way no bacteria or, or germs get into it. And then I don't really cover them. I just spray them every day. Just like the last video you saw of um, me starting, what was it, um, kale, the sea kale. And this tray here, I've got all these planted with different cold crops, you know, rutabagas and this and that and the other thing. I've got the, this, I'm doing an experiment with the sweet potatoes. This one is just a full potato sitting in sand and water. Up there is the half a sweet potato cut off and it's doing the best because it's there the longest, but the potato itself is suffering 
from um you know the green algae from too much light and i've also got one in the kitchen let me show you that one okay and here's my last sweet potato this was just sitting on the shelf you know starting to grow on its own and then i'm going to put it into um the soil and then cover it with um the soil and let it grow just like that and compare the difference in the three ways of growing this right here is another what do you call that uh hobart squash and then outside i went and planted a little bit of peas today and every time i touch the soil i find potatoes i cut these in half this one's a skagit valley and it didn't survive the winter too well but this one here is almost perfect and I cut it in half and I'm gonna let it heal and then turn it into another um, growing potato and let it grow from the sprouts and let me show you one more potato if you remember in one of my last videos when I showed you how to take care of the potatoes that were sprouting and I showed you the one that was growing potatoes on its own and I just put in some soil and the potatoes itself are continuing to grow and it doesn't have any roots yet but this is one potato it's in the plurgy family it's really close to being a wild potato and it has no dormancy I was never able to harvest and eat this potato and yet it continues to multiply and multiply and multiply and multiply <laughs> You know, it's something that, I guess you could call it a perennial potato, and you just have to grab one of them little guys off and try eating it before it sprouts. I guess I'll close for now. I'd like to thank you all for coming to my house and visiting with me today and seeing what I'm up to and learning along with me. Have a great day and happy gardening.